Hello, hello. Bonnie, I think we are live. Woo! <laughs> hello, Bonnie. How are hello. you? I'm pretty good. I'm getting through the day. That is great. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to see you. Uh, the last time we talked, uh, we we were uh, like uh, you were working on a uh, on a package for Blush. We're going to mm -hmm. talk a, a little bit about that later, but yeah, it's so so nice to see you again. Uh, let's uh, wait for people to arrive. Yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, let's uh, just do a quick intro. Okay. So first of all, uh, today, welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Artsy Fartsy. It's uh, Artsy Fartsy. It's stocks in which we, uh, uh, every month, we chat with different illustrators uh, to know more about their work, their creative process, and learn where their inspiration comes from. We'll also have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, so we're really excited about that. It's going to be, uh, you go to Q&A, Slido.com slash Bonnie, and you'll be able to ask some questions to Bonnie, uh, and then we're going to see them at the end, uh, the ones that uh, get upvoted the most. So it's a popularity contest at the same time. <laughs> and, and I want to uh, remind you, we just, well, not remind you, this is new. We just created a group. Uh, on, on the Facebooks. So facebook.com slash groups slash blotch design. Uh, this is uh, for the people who are uh, using the plugin or are interested in knowing more about illustration in general. Like I invite you to join that group. And like I was saying, telling you today, we have Bonnie Kate, Bonnie Kate Wolf, uh, who is going to be talking about Diversity and inclusion, and Bonnie, uh, Bonnie is Bonnie is an illustrator, designer who works in brand and product design, and her passion is telling impactful stories through beautiful design and dynamite dynamite systems. And I have uh, known Bonnie for for some time now, and uh, I think we we bonded. Uh, I, I truly believe in everything that uh, Bonnie says and how she talks about illustration and how she talks about systems and how she uh, uh, like always thinks about inclusion and diversity. So I am really excited to talk to you uh, today. Another thing about Bonnie is that she writes about all of this, about culture, illustration systems, and also I heard that you love knitting, Taylor Swift, and <laughs> organizing all the things, <laughs> which uh, I, I need some help with that because I'm not very organized. Uh, it, 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 it appears like I have something, but uh, but no. So funny. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Pablo. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. So so nice that you you can make it. It's uh, like, a, are you excited for the for for the Fourth of July? Do you have any plans? We will probably go on a picnic. Um, we did that last weekend. Um, so we just go to the park and we stay far away from everyone. And the dog plays with the ball and is great. Oh, that's great. So hold on. Uh, tell me about your dog. Now I need, now everything is going to be about your dog. Oh, well, he's I'm perfect. Sorry. Let's see if I can get him over here. Hey, Kenobi. You want to come say hi to the internet? Is your dog's oh. name Kenobi? His name is Kenobi. Oh, his his other parent just walked in the room, so he's more excited to see Derek. <laughs> so he's um he's a little black and white dog. Well, he's not that little. He's forty five pounds. Um, but we uh, we rescued him two years ago, and he's two oh. years old, and uh, he's all speckly and has big ears. Kenobi, oh, okay. come here. Do you want to see the internet? Yeah, come on, Kenobi. Don't be shy. Come here. Come here. I'm wanna, gonna Want to see gonna... you? Come on. You're gonna be the star of the show. All right, there he is. Oh my God, so cute. He's so cute. I love you, buddy. There's all his beautiful speckles. All right, I'm gonna put him down because he's very heavy. <laughs> Sorry, Good buddy. Boy. Like, uh, I, I think we need Kenobi to, to be the, the in the show. Like, uh, maybe we can do <laughs> we can do you next time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, seriously, that's uh, so you are going to go for a picnic, you're going mm -hmm. to uh, uh, play fetch with uh, Kenobi. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. 
I, I, I love that. And uh, I, I, I miss nature. Yeah, we, uh, because of the dog, we have to go out a lot um, to walk him. So we're, we're trying different parks out, basically, and mm. just seeing which ones are people doing the best social distancing, which ones have the fewest gophers, because he really likes watching the gophers. He doesn't eat them. He just likes to watch them. Um, and then he's not using any energy. So we're just exploring all of San Francisco's parks. That's great. And before we uh, we talk about like a, 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 about everything that you're going to talk, I need to know what is in your picnic menu. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so I get a loaf. Actually, this time we're going to get two because it wasn't enough last time. Uh, so two loaves of Acme sourdough baguette because Acme makes the best bread. Um, yeah. We get some salami, little like little salami slices, and then a mild cheddar cheese to slice and put on the bread, um, and then some fruit. So like we get nectarines last time. Simple. Keep yeah. Simple. The bread is already really good. Mm -hmm. Some good ingredients, and that's all you need. Yeah. That's great. That's a, that sounds like it's going to be a, a great, great day. Uh, so uh, Bonnie, uh, I think uh, you have a presentation for us ready. I do. It's very low, but I just wanted to get straight to the work. So let me jump in. Um, all right, going to Figma. So um, just before I jump into this, I'm just going to say that these are a couple of projects I'm working on um, and just wanted to kind of talk about what I'm excited about right now um, and what I've been making. All right, here we are. Um, so hopefully you all can see. I'm going to just close that. So we're in Figma. Um, so this is a project I'm working on uh, with two friends, and it's called Design by Us, and it's going to be launching hopefully in a couple weeks, maybe a little bit sooner, um, but it will launch sometime later this month. Um, and it is a um, site dedicated to telling the stories of folks in design, um, and I am the illustrator for the project. So um, I'm illustrating all of these folks who are in the world of design, um, and then uh, other people on the team are interviewing them um, and kind of learning their stories and getting to learn more about them and kind of what makes them tick and how they got to where they are. Um, so this has been super rewarding um, for me because I get to illustrate real specific people, which I don't normally do. Like this one is my friend Joey, um, Joey Banks, and, um, oh, getting the wheel of getting there we go i was getting the swirly wheel um so it's been a nice chance to get to look at actual people actual faces um and then help tell their stories um originally the project uh we had they were using headshots um the issue with using headshots as opposed to illustration at least in a case like this when you can't do the headshots yourself they won't be cohesive but also you'll have kind of an inequality um because certain people will have a professional headshot, certain people will have a selfie. Um, so there's such a, a huge variety of like quality of photo. Um, it kind of creates an imbalance, both visually, but also like literally economically. So um, so this, this is Steven and Jen, um, and they are the co-founders. So that's a project I'm working on. I'm super excited about and would love to talk more about. Just some other things I um, have been doing kind of during lockdown. Sorry, my Figma is lagging a little bit. I think it's my computer's like, wow, you're running a, a stream and you're on Figma. <laughs> um, so this project was um, self-initiated um, and it was, I called it International Women's Month 2020 because it was International Women's Month um, back in March. And so um, I just kind of wanted to have some fun, draw some women for Women's, um, for women's Month. Um, and so these are some of the women that I look up to um, and my goal here was, again, to push myself past the kind of immediate people who might come to my mind, like Taylor Swift, um, who is here. To be fair, I did draw her because I love her. Um, but to also kind of look outside of where my immediate brain might go for, like, women who inspire me. So um, I was watching Netflix's Next in Fashion. So I drew Minju Kim, um, who's an amazing fashion designer, um, Serena Williams, um, who... Uh, is a board member at SurveyMonkey where I used to work and I was just like super inspired when she joined and lots of, lots of people. Um, and so then this is, this is one of the last things I was working on um, much earlier in the year and is kind of what I, what Pablo and I've been working on together are more systems based illustrations. So um, this is a file that you can download from my Figma um, called table mates. 
and it has all these swappable features um, to create portraits of people at a table. Um, so we have all these little different friends with all their different components and beverages and whatnot. So these are kind of the things that I work on. And um, I'm going to later, maybe depending on how the time goes, I'm going to show you something else that I've been cooking up. Um, so that's what I've been working on. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, I love all the, I, I feel like uh, there's a lot of uh, different styles in yeah. everything that you do. Like, a, but but there is a common thing theme. Like, uh, there is uh, like inclusion, diversity. A lot of them uh, include women. And like, uh, like, can you tell me a little bit about your your process? Like, coming up with a, like, why would you go with a different style when you see like a, a lot of illustrators? Sometimes they just like mm -hmm. focus on one style, and that's all they yeah. do. And here I saw a range of, of, of different uh, explorations that you do. So can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So um, I am super interested in the craft of illustration, I would say, maybe as opposed to kind of the pure storytelling. Um, I think there are a lot of illustrators who, especially maybe ones who write comics or graphic novels, um, who want to tell a story. And so the illustration is maybe a, a device for telling that story. I am super interested in doing a lot of that, but also in the kind of just figuring out how things visually work, creating systems, um, trying out different styles, because I like to just do the drawing part very, very much, if that makes sense. Um, and so one of the things I realized, because I've never really had one style, um, for me, it's more about seeing kind of what fits the project. Um, so when I'm working with companies as a brand designer and an illustrator, um, typically I don't have the luxury of going, Hey, I just want to draw in whatever style I want. I have to work within their world or I'm developing a style for that company. Um, like I did at square, um, I recently got to work with Lyft. Um, and I, I don't think I can show anyone yet, but, uh, hopefully they'll be able to show the stuff soon. And that's got a totally different, totally different style. It's also all designed for mobile. So it's really, really tiny. Um, so I find great joy in getting to kind of experiment see what happens, try new things rather than find a style and stick to it. Cause I just get bored very easily. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I think uh, you're a little bit like me. I like, if you see like my doodles, like they will change from one day to another. I just get inspired. I want to try something else. And, and then suddenly like you're saying too, I'm like, ah, like uh, now I'm bored. I, I want to try something different. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I love that. I love that because, uh, and, and I love that you are also thinking of uh, like the client's needs, whereas like, mm -hmm. hey, the client uh, might need a different style, might need a, a something that fits more their brand. So uh, yeah. you, we have to adjust, right? Uh, have, you, have you ever had a client where they just let you do their thing? It was like, yeah, do yeah. whatever you want. Or hey, or maybe, hey, we like that thing that you did. Yes. So, uh, so the design by us project, that was the first kind of section I showed, um, uh, Jen and Steven approached me and said, Hey, we're making some illustrations and they're not turning out great. And can you help us? Um, and I basically said, I will do this. I just want to be part of the project. So here's kind of the styles that I sort of work in. Here's some of the stuff that I'm thinking might work and be appropriate for the kind of visual language you're using. Um, here is a test. And they were like, we love it. Great. Let's make, you know, let's make 15 of them. Um, oh, yeah. so that was awesome. Um, so got to do that with them and that's an ongoing project, which is great. So it'll, I'm sure it'll develop a little over time. Um, but I've created kind of a system for myself, but it's just nice and simple. And I can do one of those drawings in about 40 minutes, which is nice. So it's not a huge lift. Um, another project where I'm getting this kind of freedom, you would never, ever expect. Um, I am working with, uh, the state of California. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> How come? What are you doing with the state of California? Yeah. So I am working with the California court system um, to help them develop a self-representing litigant website, which basically means they're making a website to help people represent themselves in court. Um, because most court cases, you represent yourself. So that's things like divorces, custody stuff. There, there's a lot of things where like small claims court, where you have to represent yourself and you have to do complicated things like fill out a form. 
but it's not just fill out a form. It's like fill out a form and then make a copy and then give it to the person and get it stamped and then send it, have a third person send it to the, like, it's just crazy. It's really complicated. So uh, with that project, um, because it's government-based, you send a proposal and you say, this is, I propose we're going to do this. And um, my proposal was for the illustrations and iconography. Um, and I had kind of an idea of what I thought they would need. And I just kind of, I, you know, we, I ended up getting chosen. I made some mood boards and it was like every choice that I made, they loved. They were like, yes, that is right. It's working. It was so great. And the team is really, really nice. And they're all super experienced and, um, and friendly and good listeners. And so it feels like everything I've been making has been really well received. Um, and we're all just listening to each other and, so I, it was kind of surprising because when you think of the government, you don't necessarily think of like fun illustrations that are helpful and like good websites is not what comes to mind when I think of the government. Um, so that project has been really rewarding because um, we're really working together as a team. That's that's so that's so great. I, I and you're right. It's uh, like a, I've been just having to go through uh, a lot of forms actually for California mm -hmm. because uh, starting like blush is not just like all the cool things in the drawings. There's also a lot of things that you have to do to create a company. Yeah. And, and, and in California, if you're uh, starting a company, well, you have to go register and, and uh, mm -hmm. register employees and all that. Well, going through those forms, like government, California government forms, at least, Oh my God, it yeah. is a nightmare. It is, it, it is like seriously like hell on earth. Yeah. Uh, and, and I suppose like even just for, for you, like a, a designer, like someone that spots those things mm -hmm. that, that could be improved. I'm sure that you find those and you're like, oh, this, this could yeah. have been done this way. So it's, I, I suppose it's even worse for someone that like kind of understands like what is going wrong there. Because yeah. sometimes like as a user, you actually blame yourself. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I. Anyway, it's it's great that uh, those uh, those sites are going to get some love. Yeah, uh, and 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 illustration like I couldn't find any illustration in, in all that. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the challenges with this. Um, so some of the things that they're trying to explain to people are really like if you say the, the general idea, it sounds easy, but then once you actually explain how it works, you realize it's actually kind of complicated. So one mm -hmm. of the things that we're trying to explain to people is the concept of a self-addressed envelope. So literally writing your own name and address on an envelope, putting that inside another envelope and then sending that to somebody who's going to send you something back. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people who maybe have never even sent a letter or never used an envelope. And right, like they're especially, you know, as as the population continues to grow and we have, you know, new people who are used to using the Internet. Um, but a lot of this stuff has to be done in physical papers um, so just getting people to understand, yes, your name and address on the front. Yes, it sounds weird, but that's where it goes. Um, that, and so with that, the illustration, I just went easier. through this. I just went through this. This yep. problem that you're describing, yeah. I just had to do this and send it to the IRS. Yeah. But on the IRS, I had to put another one inside the other. Yeah. I was like, is that even possible? Is that going to fit? Where um, it, it, it's seriously like, it's, like it's the same even, size. Like, How are you going to put it inside? Oh my God. I, I need it. I needed your illustrations to tell tell me how to fix that, yeah. uh, how to do that, and uh, and it sounds like it's a cool project because uh, uh, like if people need to defend defend themselves, uh, I'm I'm sure like that's that cannot be easy. Just like uh, going uh, out there and just like yeah, I'm going to represent myself in the court of law. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like, is it like ju judge judge Judy something like that? So, so weirdly, um, I've actually done that. Like you being in Judge Judy. I was, it wasn't Judge Judy. I was actually on Jimmy Kimmel. You you were in Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel had a, a judge. Was yeah. Jimmy Kimmel the judge? He's called Judge James and he has a judge segment. And my boyfriend and I went on it. <laughs> like as. What as was a, it? So. You, was it between you? The no, 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 no. We were on the same side. It was us okay. versus his. Um, his ex, now ex, landlord's daughter's husband so that many layers tells you already that they were kind of terrible um they mm. uh so short long story short um there were they they went on a year-long honeymoon to southeast asia and left derek in the house and 
because they are very, very wealthy. And, um, and they said, you can eat anything in the cupboard. Like, don't worry about it. And then there were ants because it was the summer in San Francisco. So we threw stuff out that had ants on it and they came back and then they decided to sue us for throwing away stuff in cupboards that was like old expired, like olive oil and stuff like that. And they literally sued us on Christmas Eve was when they filed the paperwork. And Christmas uh, Eve. Christmas Eve. Like what kind of like person is spending their Christmas Eve filing paperwork? Come on, people. So on. so we uh so we were gonna go to small claims court, but uh instead Judge James, so the, the Jimmy Kimmel segment, they found our case in the like court system and asked us if we would come be on the show. So Jimmy Kimmel was the judge instead of like a regular judge. Um, and we won because they were, were they there too. Sorry. They were there too. Yeah, they were there too. Yeah. They defended themselves. Um, they. Do you get like, money for going uh, there? So yeah, we, we got paid for like, you know, the inconvenience of having to go to LA for a day. Um, and I mean, it was super fun for us. Cause I was like, yeah, we, we threw stuff away. It, it had ants on it. What do you want to like use coffee filters covered in ants? No. What's wrong with you? No, of course not. Oh okay. man. So, so yeah, I've been through the process and luckily I didn't have to go actually into small. This is a court, totally but, different process though. This is not a <laughs> correct, but you have to fill out. We, we almost ended up in small claims court cause you have to, you have to do stuff with them. Say you're getting it solved by like a mediator or like, and you have to drop the case. There's a lot of stuff. And it got to the point where, I was like one day away from um, from being able to get the thing sort of – I mean, it's like so complicated. I can't even remember the like legal details of just I, getting all the forms set up. And it's so it's a nightmare. So working on this project I'm is sure. – Yeah, that it makes me feel better. But I'm, I'm glad you won. And now, <laughs> now that you know all that experience, that you're going to be able to help people with your mm -hmm. – to understand all yeah. of this uh, stuff. And uh, so, okay, let's move on to the next section. Next section is just going to be questions. Love. Questions from people. So uh, for everyone that is here, uh, we are going doing uh, some questions on uh, slido.com slash bunny. So if you want to go and vote or ask a question, you can add it now, but I can... Go ahead and see some of the questions right here. So, Bonnie, first question. First question, the one that has most votes is, Hi, Bonnie. Where do you find inspiration? Your designs are amazing. Oh, that's so nice. Um, so a lot of different places. Um, one of my goals with illustration is to try and broaden my place where I find in, uh, inspiration. I can't lie, I do use Pinterest a lot, like, like especially if I'm trying to figure out how to draw something, um, like hand holding pen and then, you know, I'm trying to figure out like how does that look kind of a thing. Um, but I also look at like children's book illustration, fashion illustration, trying to get away from looking at tech illustration to inspire tech drawings, since mostly where I work is tech. Um, in the future, what I'm now starting to kind of look at um, as I'm moving into more conceptual work, like the stuff for Design by Us, because I can make my own decisions. Um, I want to start looking more at art history outside of the Western world where a lot of our inspiration kind of comes from. Um, so one of the things I want to start looking at more is Egyptian hieroglyphics, because that's like the ultimate illustration system. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start looking there. And I think there's also a lot of really beautiful art happening and, have, and, and that has happened throughout history in both India and Japan um, and other parts of Asia as well. But a lot of work that has very specific style choices that we basically never see, like it, it's used in history and then we never look at it again. And most of the stuff that we see now to me looks like an evolution of um, like, you know, European portraits basically, and not a huge amount has changed from that. Um, but there's all this beautiful historical art outside of Europe. So I'm going to be digging more into that and seeing how that can kind of inspire me. Um, and then the other kind of way I get inspiration is just color and playing with color, looking at portraits of people that I admire and seeing what kind of colors come come from those images. Um, so I've been doing uh, a lot of pictures of Taylor Swift. I've said Taylor Swift like three times now. I love her so much. Um, but yeah, just looking at like her music videos and 
which are really graphic. And to me, they feel very illustrative, even though they're film um, and seeing what kind of images and symbolism and color comes out of that. And so trying to look just outside of tech illustration as much as possible, um, because otherwise it gets very samey. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, the tip of the day, just go watch Taylor Swift videos and you, you'll feel inspired. Yeah. <laughs> so next question is, uh, what does your process, uh, sorry, what does your process look like in creating swappable illustrations? I struggle with working on Procreate and integrating it further. Love your work! Exclamation mark. Oh, all these people are so nice. Yes. So I don't use Procreate a huge amount, um, but I can. Sh so what I can show you, I'm gonna I'm gonna screen share this. This is the one I said might come up um, to kind of give you an idea of uh, kind of how this starts before you get like a full system like this. So this is portrait system. As you can see, it is not done. It has only one hairstyle. Um, but basically what I will start with is you, you kind of have to have a concept. Some this con and, it, and it can be very simple. So like people at a table was a concept. Portrait is the concept for this. So um, what I will do is I will draw kind of a basic. In this case, it's a head. It, might, it could be a full body. But, you know, get your basic element that's going to be the um, item that stays the same throughout into place. And then start creating alternative options for the then kind of next major component. So for here, it's the eyes, right? So I then drew these like angry eyes and cat eyes, just eyes, sad eyes, so different kind of expressions. Um, I'm probably going to create some, uh, this is this is still all in progress. So I'm probably going to actually be changing it so you can have different eye colors as well, rather than all black. Um, so then I've just started now doing noses, mouths, um, and hair. And then the way that these all then swap out are, so this is the same um, master component. So this is in Figma. Um, so if we look, I'm going to just take this out of a, there we go. So there's friends. So there's, there's the component cat eye. Um, that's the instance, the lips, the nose, crew cut is the hairstyle. Um, and then I've just changed the colors um, to kind of start playing with skin tone. Um, so one of the, oh, there's the dog. Um, <laughs> um, one of the great things about these systems is it's very easy to quickly try out a bunch of different skin tones, different facial expressions, different, lo lots of different things that help you build a more um, diverse pool of illustrations. Um, one of the things I've been struggling with with this specific um, system that I'm building is so we have kind of like, as you can see, I'm starting to do the head. So like this face is the exact same shape as this face. Um, and even though this face is inspired by Janelle Monet's face, um, there are a lot of different face shapes. And so how do you make all of that combinable then with hair? With How do you make it so people can really represent themselves but not go so overboard that it feels overwhelming that you have so many components people don't know how to choose? Um, so there's kind of an element of limiting yourself as well as creating opportunities for diversity um, and kind of figuring out where your best, um, your effort is best spent in creating something so that the end user feels comfortable using it. Um, so in terms of Procreate, I've, I've kind of just started getting more into like Procreate and Fresco. Um, I would imagine what you would do is create some sort of background layer. Pablo does this. Pablo can probably talk about this as well, but like create a background layer that's like your body or your face or however much of a person you're going to show. Um, and then draw on top of that and then just keep creating layers that are versions of that element. Um, the great thing about Figma, or if you want to use Sketch, I do not endorse Sketch, but you can. I'm not going to tell you you can't, um, but Sketch or Adobe XD um, as well. You have the whole concept of components and master components and instances, and it makes it really easy to see how these things look when combined in different ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, for those who don't know, let me can I share uh, just in the same the same topic, uh, share my screen so people can see your uh, system being used on on Blush. Yeah. Let me share it real quickly. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. 
oh my God, look at that. <laughs> Screenception. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, uh, like for example, I have a, a, a couple of screens here. And uh, if you if you haven't done this, uh, you can go to uh, uh, go here and you can go to plugins and uh, search for uh, Figma if you want to try Bonnie's. Uh, oh no, not Figma, Blush. You're more writing Figma. <laughs> Blush. Okay, and then uh, oh my god, go to the to this thing and install it. Well, once it, it's installed, then you'll be able to. Uh, oh, <laughs> or something. Uh, you can go here and open it, and at, in, in this window, you're going to be able to go to like find it here or go to artist. And uh, uh, Bonnie is is here, and then you're going to be able to see a collection that you made, uh, which is called Open Figures. Uh, and on this, there are some scenes that are already created. And also you can create your own scenes with different characters. So let's say, for example, here that I want to uh, insert uh, a couple of... Uh, mm -mm -mm. What's going on with this? Sometimes... Uh, oh, it put it in the rectangle. The rectangle is, has a fill with, your, with the illustration. There you go. So... Uh, there you go. So let's say that you have, uh, you want to say that three characters are going to do to be here in this uh, form. I don't know why, but you, you want to create a composition like that. Uh, like what Bonnie was talking about, all of those uh, components, she made all these components so you can change, for example, the lower body, the upper body, but also like go as deep as like A, the different expressions that the characters have. Mm -hmm. And, and also like even facial hair. So, and you can also just go there and random like do that, or you can just so just randomize, which I am addicted to just clicking the Yeah, oh, I love watching the randomize. Oh, they yeah. all have the same shirt. But let's say that uh, from there, A, you know what? I like this one, but I'm, I think uh, let's change the color of the skin on this one uh, to be more like a natural color. Boom, you can change that. And let's say that you change the hat the change uh, to uh, uh, a turban uh, and, or let's say that you change it to uh, short hair, you can do that. And you can do that with any of the characters. And you can also, like I was saying, you can also do see scenes, uh, uh, like a Bonnie created different scenes like this, for example. Yeah, they're already, like all the different characters are there. It has a background. So you just like uh, put it there and randomize because why not? And, uh, oh man, something that- It's not in the frame. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> uh, put it in the frame by default, which is okay, but- uh, Oh, I like that it looks like it's behind the words a little bit. That's That looks good. Yeah, you know, and uh, imagine being able to just uh, do that. And, and from there, you can go to PNG large or SVG and further change some of that stuff. Uh, and also, Bonnie, I think uh, you have this available as, a, as an open. I do. System. So if people just want to go and actually see how she built it, just go to her Figma profile. Yeah. So I'm uh, at Wolf. Um, and so the great thing about that is if you want to like build your own hairstyles, you can, you know, duplicate my file and make your own hairstyles. You can change all the colors. If you're like bright colors, psh, I need some pastels up in here. You know, you can go in and change everything you want. And um, that's one of the great things I think about creating these open source illustration systems is that it enables people to have kind of a jumping off point um, where maybe they don't have enough time to create something from scratch. Maybe they don't have the skill level yet. They're still learning. Um, maybe they just want to have fun. Um, yeah. For me, I think it's it makes it illustration more acce um, accessible to folks, which that will promote diversity. So I know we're supposed to talk about diversity. Can I do? Can I talk a little bit about it? Yeah. Actually, the, the next question that I was going to tell you is like, how do you educate yourself about diversity yeah. and inclusion to be able to reflect that in your work? That's a great question. Um, so I think the first thing I want to just say as, as kind of a recognition of my own privilege is that um, I grew up in Switzerland. My parents moved us there when I was eight. Um, and even though Switzerland is obviously very white, um, it's Switzerland, um, just going outside of the U.S. and living there for a period of time. And then I also went to college in the U.K., um, kind of exposed me to the idea of just that America is not the only thing there. It, there's there's so much out there. Um, 
so that that's a big part of it for me is just getting to grow up with that kind of different perspective of not just being America all the time. Um, the next part is listening. So um, I'm very thankful that there are a lot of people who have different experiences from me, who are different genders and different races and all different lots of things, um, who are constantly trying to help you and trying to tell their stories and trying to explain their experiences. And your job, especially as a white person, um, is like if we're talking about race, which I think is the most relevant conversation probably to have right now. Um, is to, to just listen to those people and not to ask them for things, but to just listen to what they're already telling you. Because there are a lot of people doing a lot of work to help you be a better ally um, or to ally better and to be anti-racist and to learn things that are outside of yourself. So listening for me is super important. And then kind of next step is if you feel, so like one of the, one of a more specific example was um, in creating one of the systems for Square, um, my goal was to create this little system where it would make my life easier so that I could swap heads out and then it's not always the same person. Um, but I wanted to create very specifically some black hairstyles um, because the visual, like the, it's just, it's going to be very, very different. Like just the texture is so different. Obviously color is different. There's a lot of differences. And I knew that um, having watched um, Good Hair by Chris Rock, which is an amazing documentary about um, black hair and black culture, I knew that it was important and I should not just do it by myself. So I reached out to two people who were um, other squares, neither of them were illustrators, but both black squares who I felt wouldn't mind me asking them for advice and feedback. Um, so kind of knowing your audience and not just going up to people of color or any other marginalized group and asking for their work um, because that work is worth money. Um, so keeping in mind, like you shouldn't be asking people to do things for free if you can help it. Um, but asking people who are friends of mine to give me feedback into, I'm showing them like, hey, these are some styles I found in like Google image searches and based on my experience and what I've seen and observed, what else should I be looking at? What am I missing? Because doing a Google image search, Google is super biased. Um, I'm I'm sure that you guys have seen how if you type certain things in, it will, it will give you results that don't feel um, truly unbiased. So asking people, checking in, looking at other sources. Um, so that for me has been really helpful is listening to people and then asking for feedback where I can. Um, and when people are offering you help to be gracious and accept it, um, so I've done a lot of work with um, ERGs, so that's employee resource groups, which are essentially um, grassroots-led, so employee-led groups at larger or, or smaller tech companies or, or other companies um, that are for women or people of color. Um, there are pride groups, lots and lots of different groups. Um, so I've worked with a lot of those on helping develop identities. Um, and so there, again, you're building something for the community, so you need to listen to them and really like research, always be checking in, making sure that what you're building is for them and not just to like lift yourself up and to be like, oh, look how good of an ally I am. I made a logo for people who are marginalized. Um, so there's a lot of things out there for you to read and look at. Um, and then the other part is to be able to, there's like, there's a lot of parts. I say the other part, like there was only, that was one part and that was like eight parts. Um, and so the other thing I'm doing is trying to see kind of where I'm seeing gaps in my own experience. So one of the things that I don't see a lot of is, especially in tech, um, is art of folks who are people of size. Um, there's not a lot of art of fat people. And that's super disappointing to me because that makes up a huge percentage of not just this country, but of you know other places. Um, and fat phobia is really really nasty and it's very easy to um it's very easy to engage with because it's acceptable um uh, by a lot of people so for me it's now trying to figure out right how can i make this group of people feel more included am i the right person to be doing that work probably more so than if i were to create say like a black pride like a like a like a black lives matter set of characters it's probably not on me to do um 
rather I can be promoting artists who are doing that work, who in this example would be black. It's much better for me to promote black artists rather than for me to try and make the art for them, if that makes sense. So when I'm creating systems, I want to be cognizant of the fact, like making sure that I'm the right person to be making that work. Um, and if I'm, you know, doing it, that it's with the right intentions um, and that it's more around inclusivity rather than specific representation, um, if that makes sense. So, so that was a very long answer. Hopefully I got your, your question answered, listener. I think you did. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Bonnie. So uh, we have time for la one last question. And this last question comes from me. <gasps> yeah. I want to know, Bonnie, I want you to explain this photo to me. <laughs> So I please what explain what's going on here. Uh, okay. So yeah, this is me as a child. I'm probably like three or four. Um, and when I was in like preschool, kindergarten kind of age, um, at Halloween, they would like on the monkey bars, they would get a piece of string and tie a donut to it. And they would put it on all the monkey bars. And then as a kid, you were supposed to be able to eat the donut off the string without using your hands. So you can see me like trying not to, not to use my hands as much as possible. I'm like staring at my own hand because I know I'm not allowed to touch it. Um, and it's quite funny to watch a bunch of four-year-olds um, <laughs> try not, try to eat donuts off strings. Um, so I was dressed as a bunny and uh, so, cause it's Halloween and uh eating my Halloween string donut. That is really funny. I uh, I think uh, you were doing great. <laughs> you were about to touch it there. I can see Very that you were close. about to cheat. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, that's, that's it. Uh, I think uh, now I would like everyone to, uh, to invite you to follow uh, Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie, tell us a little bit about the... Uh, how can people can find you? I put here your Instagram and I think it's the same handle for Twitter. It sure uh, is. But yes. anywhere else, I think that you also said on, on Figma. Yep. On Figma, I'm at Wolf. I, I got into the beta early enough that I got the Wolf handle. So W-O-L-F. Um, the best place to find out what I'm up to is probably Twitter. Um, and my handle is Bonnie Kate Wolf. Um, I'm usually talking about pixels, but I'm also talking about social justice right now and hopefully forever because it doesn't end now. Um, and then if you would like to hire me, um, either as a freelancer, as a contractor, or as a full-time employee, um, my portfolio is uh, what Pablo just had up, so bonniekatewolf.com, um, because I am currently a freelancer and I'm open for new projects, either brand design or illustration work. Awesome. And I can say I have worked with Bonnie. Uh, and it was a pleasure to work with you, Bonnie. So I highly recommend working with Bonnie. It, uh, mm -hmm. Open for feedback and always uh, has a better idea than the thing that you were actually thinking. <laughs> so Bonnie, uh, it, it was a pleasure working with you. So I highly recommend it. And also great pleasure also talking to you today. Yeah, you too. So, so yeah, that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, and go check out, uh, go to, I'm going to do last promo of Blush. Go to Blush that design and you're going to be able to find uh, actually like the illustration on the left, which is apparently is flipped because it says lover, lover, but it's a. <laughs> I realized they are not, if you do something with words on it, I saw your Selena one, then I was like, I want to do a Taylor Swift shirt. And then if you flip it, it's it's backwards. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, the, that illustration is actually from Bunny, and uh, you can find that illustration system there at Blush Design. Uh, and also you can go and uh, find her on the on the Twitters and all of that because uh, it's, uh, and also hire, hire Bunny. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bunny. Thank you everyone that joined. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Pablo and Gabriela, for helping and organizing and making this really fun and a wonderful part of my day. Have a nice one. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Let's let's bye imagine bye. there's like exit music. Da, 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 da.